Welcome to Build. We are live from London, and today we are joined from Living the Dream. It's Rosie Day, everyone. Hello. Don't forget that if you've got a question for Rosie, then you can send us a tweet on Build Series London. That's Build Series LDN on Twitter. Or if you're watching live on Facebook, then you can put a comment in the video you're currently watching, and we'll do our best to get that to Rosie before the end of the interview. Rosie, hello and welcome to Bill. It's so hello, nice to see you. Hello, thank you for having me. It's lovely to have you here. So you are about to star in Sky One's new series, Living the Dream. Can you yes. tell us a bit about the new show? Um, it's about a northern family from Yorkshire. Well, I'm already sold. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and they kind of sell up and they sell everything they have and they move to Florida and they buy a trailer park. And it's all about their kind of adventures of running this trailer park and everything kind of goes quite wrong, I guess. Okay. Well, on that note, we do actually have a trailer for Living the Dream, which I yes. think we're going to watch now. Just, just here. I want to bring my family to America. Kissimmee Sunshine RV Park is yours. Have you actually been here before? No. You brought it unseen? Yeah. How did I get here? Was it? They're American, aren't they? You know, a bit weird. I think we can make something of this. So do I. And put some trunks on. So. As we can see in the trailer, there is a lot going on for this family yes. when they move out to America. Did you actually film the show in Florida where it's set? Um, we filmed in Savannah, Georgia. Okay. Um, Florida's quite hard to film in, so yeah, we went to Savannah, which apparently looks like Florida. I've never been to Florida, so I can't say if it's I'm true or not. Or not. But, yeah. And so how was it filming out there? Was it a lot of fun? It was amazing. It was, it's very, it was quite a culture shock. We kind of lived as the family did because we didn't really know what to expect. And it was very, um, it's a kind of whole different world, really. It's very, um, like, it's be I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. And the weather is insane. And kind of, it's like this, it's a complete, it could not be more different from England if it tried. Well, that's one of the big themes of the show is culture shock. Yes. Um, what was the biggest difference you experienced while you were filming out there? Biggest difference? You know, the people. The people are so kind of amazingly friendly all the time. Not that Britain's British people aren't friendly, but in like a just different level. No, Everything's America, met with a smile. Especially in the South, I feel yeah. like. Southern, Southern America. Southern hospitality. Exactly. It was incredible. And um, yeah, so that and the kind of the alligators and the, that was quite a shock and the kind of haunted history of Savannah. It's very, very haunted Savannah. So that oh. was very um, interesting. Did you experience any paranormal activity while yeah. you were there? Yeah. The oh my God, the what apart did you have? The apartment that I lived in was haunted. So my bathroom door would lock um, by itself and then my keys would go missing all the time. Oh my God. Yeah, and then there was one night where I couldn't go in my bedroom because I was thought there was like some weird dark energy. What that might have been me, but like I, mean, I think it, I want it to be a ghost. Can you like what? Was, how would you deal with that? With having a weird? I got really scared and texted everybody, going, "Can you come round? There's a ghost in my apartment." Um, yeah, because Savannah, the the main square of Savannah, there's a hanging tree where they used to hang everybody off of it, oh God. Um, and it's like literally the main square. Um, so it's it's the second most haunted city in America. And you know this firsthand now. Yeah, I know this firsthand, yeah. I mean, you're not typically someone who loses your keys, right? No, no, I'm, I'm quite organised, I like to think. Okay. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, I feel like I've been totally thrown off there. That's <laughs> Sorry. The, I'm, I'm like, Sorry. so culture shock. And I you're like, well, I did witness the ghost of a hanged person in yeah. the South. Yeah, so I did. So, But Leslie Sharp, who plays my mum, um, doesn't believe in ghosts. So I spent pretty much three months trying to convince her of paranormal activity that was she, going She on. didn't have any of that. She didn't have that. any of that. And um, so I'd come into work with like different stories kind of every day and yeah, she so would laugh at me. Aside from these horrible hauntings yes, going on at your place, from that. what were the other big cultural shocks? Like you were mentioning the, the chipperness of the people. Yeah. Was, like, that, was that annoying at all? Or were you just did it take getting used you to know, it? You it's actually, at first it's incredibly refreshing because it's very lovely for everybody to kind of be so wonderful, of course. you know, and kind to you. Um, and then, yeah, it's just, it's funny. It's just a fun, I think Brit 
British people have a very different kind of sense of humor. Yeah. Um, and but no, it was lovely kind of to be around that, and everybody on set was always so happy, and it was a real delight to kind of go to work and everyone just be having so much fun. Oh God, that sounds great. See, I'm always like whenever I'm in, I'm in America. I'll have the first couple of days where I'm like, oh, this is so nice. Everybody's, you know, you walk into a shop and everyone's like, it's good to see you, sir. And I'm like, yeah. yes, Thank it yes, it is. <laughs> Thank you. But then like three days in, I'm, I'm like, like a hangover. Or I'm cranky or something. Yeah. I'm like, oh, do you have to? Can you not just stand in the corner and not speak to me? Yeah. None of that? Or were you? No, no, I think, no, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Okay, well, let's talk about your character, Tina. Yes. Because she's a teenager. Yes. And you, while still very young, you're in your early 20s, you are not a teenager. Not How a teenager. was that? tapping into that side of things uh, i spent my life playing teenagers so i think i'm just a perpetual kind of i'm just perpetually stuck at kind of 17 um, in my real life and in kind of the <laughs> characters i play so it, i would love to say like it was really hard and i had to go really method but actually it was very very kind of easy to kind of put myself in her mind frame Did you i find guess. yourself like being really bratty on set towards like, <laughs> your on-screen parents or anything no no not like that but it's very she's very kind of She's very sporty and very lovely and kind of has, a, I think, kind of similar to me, had an idea of what she thought it was going to be like. And then it kind of, it's not as she expected, which is quite similar to me when I went out to Savannah, kind of my ideas of it and the reality, I guess, were quite, was quite different. Um, so how different is where you filmed to the place where it's set? I mean, I, I've always wanted to go to Florida. Yes, I've never been. So I actually don't know anything about Florida other than the fact that Disney's there, which is why I want to go. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if it's similar. I hope we've done a good job. I hope nobody knows that it's not... It's, we didn't film it in Florida. I hope it passes. I think they went and did, like, exterior shots of Florida and, okay. and cut them in. Make it a bit more like, yeah. like the actual yeah. thing. It sounds like you had a real, like, blast filming it. Were there any yeah. particular, like, funny memories from being on set? Like, the first time... So I was, like, desperate to see an alligator because I'm terrified of them, but I really oh, yeah, wanted sorry, to see let's one. Let's talk about these alligators. Were they yeah. just roaming the streets? No, see, I thought they were going to be, but that's in Florida, apparently. They, right. like, roam okay. the streets. So well, I was... Reassuring, at least. Yeah, so I was, like, desperate to see one. And so every day we'd drive... It was like half an hour from to where our house was, like the family's house. And I'd like spend the whole journey looking for an alligator. And then the first time I saw one was actually on a barbecue in a scene that we were filming. So I walked onto set and there's just this kind of barbecued alligator. But we didn't kill it. That's really okay. important to say that no alligators were harmed by us. It had already died. And then they put it in tinfoil and put it on a barbecue. Did you eat the alligator? <laughs> no, we Did didn't have to eat it. it. No, Phil just had to kind of like hold it up and... Oh, were you not it. tempted? No, apparently it tastes like chicken. Well, I bet, I bet. Yeah. I feel like if it was there in front of us, I'd maybe want to have a little, yeah. little taste. No, I, di I didn't. But, um, but then I did see a real one, so that was nice. Oh. And a live one. Where did you see the live one? Was this on set as well? Um, yeah, on set by, we filmed by a lake, and there was a, and there was a, he was, we called him Stumpy because he's only got three legs, and he came out. Oh, he's, that's he's adorable. There. He lives there. He's like, it's his house, and we'd never spotted him. And then on like our final night shoot, he came out for us. And I got so excited. Well, you did that, like, put your fear of alligators to bed then? Oh, no, I'm still terrified. <laughs> Just Gen not of yeah. Stumpy. Just not of Stumpy. He's a nice alligator. Okay. So, yeah. well, I feel like, you know, you can't judge them all. Stumpy's obviously... Oh, yeah, exactly. He might have not eaten anybody, so... <laughs> um, so you've got Phil, Phil Gunnister and Leslie Sharp in the show alongside you as your parents. Yeah. And they are both seasoned pros. What yes. was it like working with them? Incredible. Like, insane. I'm massive fans of both of them. Phil was Gene Hunt for me growing up. He was like he was kind of a really big part of my childhood because I was such a big fan of Ashes to Ashes and Life on Mars. And then Leslie with um, Scott and Bailey and kind of all her amazing work. So yeah. the first time we had our read through, I walked in and I was completely starstruck by both of them because they were like people that I've grown up watching and, and they were insane. I couldn't have asked for two better on-screen parents. We had, yeah, so much fun together. Did they offer you any like acting advice or like yeah, career advice they were advice always really like, they were just always really kind of supportive and... You would, Leslie would give me little tips and like they're kind of they're just brilliant and just being around them watching them on set there's kind of nothing they don't know about the industry so now I big fans of my mum and dad yeah that's what you want isn't it yeah. from on screen parents yeah exactly yeah Bill glennister has got a bit of a rep as like a tough guy especially on screen yeah how did that compared to what he's actually he's like. not tough he's lovely is he actually a big softie he's yeah he's amazing and he's so funny like he yeah he cracks the best jokes and yeah Can he's a give delight us, give us a little taste of one maybe oh, just like just like the just kind of the way he delivers like lines and stuff and just the way he kind of talks and things he comes out with are just brilliant we had a lot of like scenes in cars so we'd have a lot of time driving around and he'd keep us all entertained with his jokes so yeah he's he's wonderful okay um and let me just ask as well, you mentioned 
being starstruck by those two. Um, in a, quite a short amount of time, you've worked with some pretty big names. Yeah. Do you still get starstruck when you show up on set and you see these people? I get starstruck by everybody. <laughs> like people I see on the Bake Off, if I see them off of telly, <laughs> I'm really bad for it. Um, yeah, like when I, yeah, the people that I've worked with completely, you know, when I worked with Uma Thurman this time last year in the first scene we did together, I could barely kind of get a word out because I was just like, the Uma Thurman, like it's crazy. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, I'm awful for getting starstruck. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of known for being a fangirl of everything and everyone, so I just get really excited. So you must just be lapping up all these A-listers being around there. <laughs> yeah, I find it crazy. Who have you been the most starstruck by over the course of your career? Uh, I don't know. Actually, the, so the other days when I didn't work with her, but I met Billy Piper and she's been like, that I, I'm going to get a restraining order at some point against her because I talk From about Billie her. Piper. Yeah, I talk about her so much that um, she's like, when I was 11, I'm the biggest Doctor Who fan. Right. I really want to be in Doctor Who. I'm just going to put that out there. Put that out um, there into the universe. How <laughs> these things happen. And, um, and, and she, yeah, she brought Doctor Who back and she was kind of like my idol from when I was about 11. And then I went and saw her in Yerma in the summer and met her afterwards and just, I couldn't speak. My sister had to do all like, the talking. Was she nice? She was lovely. Well, that's what you wanted. But it? I couldn't deal with it because I was just like, You're, you don't understand what you've kind of been throughout my childhood. Um, which I think kind of creeped her out, but hopefully oh, No, I not. feel like she must get that a lot from people. I, hope, I mean, Doctor I, Who's got such a following. Exactly, yeah, exactly. I feel like you'd have to be pretty extreme yeah, to, so like... I mean, yeah. obviously, I wasn't there. I don't know how much <laughs> you were. I tried to be really chilled. It didn't work. It never worked. <laughs> um, yeah, I love that. I tried to play it cool, and then, tried you get, to play and then it cool, just yeah. go on faint. Yeah. Um, Living the Dream is slightly more comedic than yes. some of the roles that we've seen you do in the past. How do you find doing comedy compared to doing drama? I, I loved it. I've not done a huge amount of comedy before and it was really lovely to kind of go to work and kind of not have to get into these kind of emotional places and go to work and have fun and hopefully make something that other people will find really kind of enjoyable to watch and that my parents and my grandparents can watch and kind of, you know, not see their kind of child being... Distraught. Yeah, distraught on place. screen. Yeah, so yeah, no, it, it, was, it was absolutely lovely. How long were you actually in Georgia for? Uh, three months we were in Georgia. You mentioned the like cultural differences between yeah. the UK and the US. Did you make any sort of faux pas while you were out there? Were there any moments where you sort of said the wrong thing and got a funny look or something? Um, well, because Savannah's quite a Trump state. So oh. there was times where we kind of, we would mention that and then realize we probably shouldn't. Wrong um, crowd. Yeah, <laughs> yeah wrong crowd. Because they're all, um, not they're all, but there's quite a lot of Trump supporters mm -hmm. kind of down in the in the South. So we, how, we, how we kept that, our mouths shut. Around? I mean, nobody actually kind of like told us off about it, but you know, it's an interesting climate where you know, you know, it's a very different place. Yeah. Very different values to us, I guess. Yeah. Let's uh, let's talk about your next project, which is Down a Dark Hall. Yes. Which is the new movie from Twilight creator Stephanie Meyer. Yes. What can you tell us about that new movie? Um, it's about uh, five teenage girls who are kind of very rebellious and a bit mucked up and they get sent to a boarding school and um, their headmistress is Uma Thurman, French Uma Thurman. And um, Ooh, she- that Uma Thurman. Yeah, it was amazing. And, and they kind of find- French from me there, Uma Thurman, your tag, we'll have a scene. Sorry, please do continue, Rosie. Um, they have, um, they find out they kind of have powers, I guess, and everything goes a bit wrong and- yeah, there's a lot of dark things going on, but what it was just. What is your character's so power? Do they all have different? Well, powers yeah, all? it's all kind of like, it's like weird things. So like, mine discovers she's an incredible artist, and like, yeah, it's very kind of it goes very weird, but it's it was brilliant. It was like being in one of my favorite films was Centrinians, and it's like a really dark Centrinians. I was so, gonna say it sounds yeah. like Centrinians meets yeah. the craft. Yeah, exactly. And like, so we all want, kind of wandered around in like our little school uniforms, and you know, had powers, and it was just it was amazing. It was really cool. Are you a big fan of that whole like paranormal side yeah, of things? Yeah, completely. Apart from when you experience it. Apart from when I experience it myself. Yeah. yeah, no, definitely. I'm definitely one for, for a horror and for scary kind of things. And so doing this was just like the mixture of everything I'd kind of always wanted to do. And like me and the girls kind of, because they were all American, yeah. we kind of became like a little girl gang, which was really fun. How did like being in, I mean, is it a horror or is it, or is it a bit more? Yeah, well, it's, I guess it's because it's aimed at kind of teen, the teenage yeah. market. So I wouldn't probably class it as a horror, but it's... Um, but it was spooky yeah, elements in. Yeah. How did being in that compare to watching it as a fan? Did it um, kind of ruin it for you at all? Being no. like, oh, that's going to look really good, but now I'm looking at it in an entirely it's... green screen situation. Yeah. <laughs> no, like I still find the first thing, one of the first films I ever did was a very dark horror and I still found that very scary. And so <laughs> I think if you can kind of escape from it and watch it as a, like, a piece of work, um, I think then 
that's probably a good thing. So I, I, I can normally watch things and not think about, oh, that's when we filmed that and that's when we did that. So. And obviously, it's a new um, it's a new project from Stephanie Meyer. Were you yes. a fan of Twilight? Yes, I, you that? know, Team Edward and all that. I went to the cinema with my T-shirt and everything when I was about 14. And all my friends were kind of big, yeah, Stephanie Meyer fans. And so, and she was on set um, and that was really cool to kind of meet her. As that well. is really cool. That's yeah. really impressive. Obviously, those films became such big, like, cult followings. Yeah. And people got so into it and so, like obsessed with those films yeah. is that something that you think you would find a bit daunting if this was to happen with down the dark yeah i really don't like people looking at me so yeah all right, like, well <laughs> this isn't at all terrifying um <laughs> yeah no yeah i kind of i just like the work really i just like acting it's just getting to play pretend for a job and that's really fun how, so how do you deal with the other side of things when you know the media are doing things like this i'm terrible i just ignore it i just <laughs> pretend like it doesn't happen you know what though that's probably the best way to yeah. do it because so many people would go in and buy into it and like laugh yeah. at the attention no i'm the opposite i'm like yeah no i'm hiding under my bed it's away like from the other it. way yeah. um also oh we have actually had a social comment from beth on facebook who says i loved rosie in outlander oh yeah what was that like as an experience that was like that? the best year ever like it's the best tv show I can't speak kind of more highly about it. It's all going to have beautiful period kind of television and the actors in it are wonderful. And yeah, no, I had the, I genuinely like the best time filming it. Outlander is something else that like the fans are like, they are amazing. They are the loveliest people and they are, yeah, they are so supportive of the show. What is something that would surprise Outlander fans about making it, do you think? About making it? Um, about being on the set? Being on the set. I mean, you, it's painful because the costumes that you have to wear, the corsets are oh, so God, horrendous. And so like the first scene we ever did, I thought I was having a heart attack because the corset was so tight and I'd never worn one before and all the acid had come up in my chest and I was like, am, am, I, am I dying? And how um, long were you wearing those for at a time? For, for you know, kind of 12 hour oh days. Oh my God. You got used to it though. So, you know, you, uh, you got used to your organs being crushed. It's probably just your rib cage yeah. changing shape. <laughs> yeah, that. Like Kardashian yeah. style when they wear those, yeah. when they wear those like, waist trainers all the time. Yeah. Um, so that was kind of really fun. But no, it was a lot. It's, it's an amazing show. Can I ask you as well, you've written the script for your own show. Is that right? Oh, yeah. Say. How did that end up coming about? Uh, so my, one of my best friends, Charlie, um, we kind of hadn't seen each other in about 10 years. And then I went to this uh, private members club and she opened the door and I was like gosh hello you and then we went for a coffee and started talking and she's a very funny person and so I started writing just about her because I write anyway and then I told her and she was like should we write this show so we've written this tv show called adulting that yeah hopefully we want to kind of get made and that's something that I kind of want to do I want to write a write a lot so. that's so impressive yeah. so what's the show actually about i mean it's kind of loosely autobiographical about kind of two 21 year olds that know nothing about life and are kind of dumped in a flat together and have to figure stuff out um based on our own personal experiences like mine so i i spent four weeks washing my clothes with dishwasher tablets oh because I, I didn't real i genuinely didn't realize until my sister came in and went what are you washing your clothes with and i was like the things on the washing machine and yeah, so that happened. So it's just like stuff like that. People don't teach stuff. People don't teach you. No, it is. Ooh. I completely agree. Like I think the first time you move out, you it's always terrifying. Up, well, I just I was like, well, this is great. I can't cook, so I'm just going to eat takeaways every yeah. day. But you can't do that because no. they actually cost money. Yeah, so they're then, really expensive. Yeah, halfway yeah. through the month, I was like. I can't have no money. And then I got my balance and it was literally Pizza Hut, Pizza Hut. I, got, <laughs> yeah. I was like, come on now, Daniel. That's, yeah, no, completely. So our whole show is about, yeah, it's about kind of how awful it is when you first move out and you're just trying to find your kind of way in the world. I yeah, I feel like a lot of people, I was going to say our age, but you are a little bit younger than me, <laughs> so I'll not lump us together. But I feel like yeah. people of that generation, yeah. that's a real thing when you're like in your early 20s it's different to how it was a few years ago where that was like proper adult level yeah like, no this is just like we're all just mucking in trying to figure out what the heck we're kind of doing <laughs> but we've a bit right because people have kind of coined the term adulting so we're trying to get in there before because you know the kinder bueno advert now do a whole thing about adulting and we're like ah so we're trying to get, get in there before the kids. We're trying, people. we're trying and to coin that term. Choking has a tiny toys. Yes. Don't let don't let them get one over on yeah, you. Yeah, we won't. <laughs> we do have some questions from people in the audience. So who is up first? Hello. Hello. Hello, Rosie. Um, I know you filmed on location in the US. Was there anything you missed about the UK? Um, yeah, spaghetti hoops and baked beans and um 
I miss yeah that a lot and Nutella. They don't have a lot of Nutella, so or I like home comforts and shortbread. The best day was when I walked into this weird little shop and found like shortbread in a shop, and I bought a lot of that. So yeah. Did you get any um, like new US home comforts while you were out there? If you were out there for quite a long time, so they're, well, they're kind of food. Yeah. Things. How are you finding that? They have an amazing thing called grits, which are like kind of weird rice pudding, which sounds disgusting, but I mean it does. It, but they're, it's quite amazing. So that was my thing that is I that kind of took grits, home. Is that yeah, you get it with like cheese or like you can get it all kinds of different flavors. So that was quite cool. No, I mean that does sound rank. Yeah. But I feel like it, does, it sounds awful. Like I'm not selling you're it. What you replacing it with is spaghetti hoops. Hoops, yes. Yeah. yeah, I feel like it's not like you're used to like foie gras and no. like steak, <laughs> and then just suddenly come down to cheese grits. Yeah. Uh, who's next in the audience? Hi. Sorry. Hi. Um, you mentioned you're a writer. I just wanted to know who's your dream writing partner. My dream writing partner, it's probably like, I mean, aiming big, like Emma Thompson. I think she's been a massive inspiration for me kind of growing up um, with all the kind of films that she writes and kind of her female outlook on the world as well, I think is really important. So she's definitely somebody that I don't think I'll ever get to write with her, but I'd like to kind of emulate her career one day if it's possible. No, but you've got to put these things out there. Said Doctor Who, put it out there. Yeah. Emma Thompson, Doctor, Doctor, Doctor Who. Emma, call me. She, <laughs> do you know what? She came. My best friend had a show at Edinburgh, and my friend gave her a leaflet, and she came and watched the show. And I just what thought, that nice was, how amazing is that? Yeah, like I, I thought that was incredible. Well, you know what? You need leaflets on you all the time. Leaflets, <laughs> <Yeah>. Emma. <laughs> just chasing people down the street. Next time you're at the BAFTAs, just yeah. smoosh everyone out the way. Well, like, Emma Thompson. Yeah, got something to tell you. Yeah, literally. Well, like Lena Dunham, if I ever saw her, I'd just have to like throw myself at her and be like, please. Oh, because she's a writer as well, she's right? Amazing. So she's amazing, yeah. She created, yeah, girls. So, yeah, and adulting, I think, is probably quite similar. So, not that we've copied her, but, no. like, I'd love her help. Well, it sounds like much more of, like, a British... It's very British, yeah. Like yeah, British well, very, very British. Which I think is what we need. <laughs> um, who is up next in the audience? Um, so, you're playing a teenage girl on the show. Yeah. Is there any advice you'd give to your teenage self? So much. Oh, my God. Um, I think probably just... Uh, enjoy your life a bit more and stop worrying that everything's gonna go wrong and kind of I now live my life by a motto that's like what's for you won't go by you so I guess just to try and trust trust that I think just chill out teenage it's so hard as a teenage girl so I think just to kind of relax a bit more that's good that you feel a lot more chilled now than you no, were when you I wish I did <laughs> <laughs> no sometimes I do and then other times I, I don't at all so this is advice for your teenage self. Yes, and my and current self. Yeah, and your future self probably and my future as well. self, yeah. Yeah, nice one. Should chill out. <laughs> All right, well, that, unfortunately, Rosie, is all we've got time for. But thank you thank so you much so for coming much. along and chatting to us. The new series of Living the Dream starts on Sky One tomorrow at 9 p.m. And then it'll be on Now TV. Please give it up one more time for Rosie Day, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.